Hey guys, it's Anthony. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about where the market went this past week, where we think the market's going in this coming week. And if you're looking to become a consistently profitable trader, definitely hit that subscribe button. I personally trade ES and NASDAQ futures. So if you trade that, you'll definitely want to subscribe. It's taken me just over two years to become consistently profitable. It's taken me a lot of courses, a lot of pain, a lot of lessons learned. But over time, I became more consistent. And if you're not consistently profitable yet, then I think you will be over time as well. It's just going to take more time, effort, and lessons. So without further ado, let's dive into the charts. We're taking a look at NASDAQ on the daily chart. And I said in my past video that I was hesitant to go short, even though we did break this swing low here, the swing low of June 22nd, because I thought that we had a window dressing and a long weekend coming and we could have a squeeze on a Thursday, Friday. And that we did Friday, we had a pretty big update, about 1.5% up. And then on ES, an even bigger update actually took out these highs. So ES is stronger than NASDAQ, and uh, I, that, that's also why I wasn't going to be looking to short ES whatsoever. I did take some intraday longs on ES and NASDAQ, and um, on NASDAQ, I actually took a swing long because I thought that we would get the strength from Friday going into the Friday weekend. So on Thursday, once we sold off, we came down to this uh, 15,030 area. And then once we sold off and couldn't break the low, I actually got in a long and just targeted the 15,220 high. So this was on Thursday and I ended up taking profit on the Friday. It was about 15,074 as, as my entry. My stop loss was below the recent low on the one hour and then target was above recent highs and it was almost a three to one. So I took about 150 points of profit there and that was just from Thursday into Friday uh, based on the one hour chart because if you just look from left to right, you see that we we put in a low, we had a higher low here, pushed up, broke the recent swing highs. So to me that, that was bullish, saying that we're gonna take out some more highs. So once we came up, we sold off Thursday, but Thursday this low could not break the recent swing low at down about 1526. And then we had some buying and that got me excited because I thought, okay, we can't clearly can't break these recent swing lows here in the one hour. So let me get in some longs on NASDAQ and just target the recent highs because again, I also had this bias that Thursday, Friday, we would see a squeeze because funds are gonna be forced to buy and we have a long weekend going into Independence Day and I did some back testing. It's typically always a big green day on Friday. So I took the swing long, risking the recent swing lows as a stop and then targeting those highs. So that was good, good for 150 points on NASDAQ. Great trade there. But a red flag, NASDAQ was weaker than ES. We could not break the highs. And that's what I wanna see because again, I'm looking to build some swing shorts to at least target this uh, 14,850 swing low, possibly getting down to the 14,400 area. The thing I like is that ES did get stronger. So S&P 500 is now stronger recently than NASDAQ and typically, that just means that there's less of a risk appetite. At most major tops, the NASDAQ tops earlier and ES keeps pushing higher, and that signals some re weakness for risk. Once ES rolls over, NASDAQ rolls off, rolls over and sells out even harder. And you'll see that at other tops. So first, obviously you can see we have a lower high on NASDAQ, and then on ES, you can see we have a higher high. If you go back to the all-time highs, you'll see that in the beginning of November, we had a high on S&P 500, about 4,800, sold off, came up, actually made a higher high in middle of December, sold off, and then made another higher high at the end of December into the beginning of January. NASDAQ, we had the new high at the beginning of November. We had a higher high at the, mini, mi, at the middle of November, but then since then we sold off, we pushed up, and remember, mid-December, we had a higher high on SCP 500, but on NASDAQ, we could not get above these recent highs. And then we pushed up, and again, uh, S&P 500 had an even higher high again at the end of December into beginning of January. NASDAQ at least got above the mid-December high, but could not get above the mid-November high. So basically, NASDAQ was trading a little lower while S&P 500 was trading a little higher. And then after that, we had a rollover. So that's just one sign I'm looking at. And that's why if I was to short, I'd be looking at shorts on NASDAQ over S&P 500. For shorts, this is a positive sign. It looks like the VIX bottomed and pushed up because we had a higher low on the VIX while putting in higher highs on S&P 500. So there is now a divergence, at least. Typically when we see a divergence between VIX and S&P 500, it's near a top or a reversal. So basically, went higher in S&P 500, 
same dates. We actually went higher on the VIX while going higher in S&P 500. Again, it's not an end-all be-all sign, but typically signs like this are warning signs saying that there may, may not be a lot of potential upside in the near future and we're more, more closer to having a correction. DXY, in my previous video, I said I was looking for us to target this swing high at the high 104s and typically as the dollar pushes up, NASDAQ tends to go down. So we're just gonna be keeping an eye on the dollar. Obviously, if we just peaked here and put it in a lower high from this high and rolled over, it would mean that the market's more, more likely to go up. If we continue to have DXY climbing, then we can have a higher probability of a correction in NASDAQ. Here's PC, it's the put to call ratio, and it's marked major tops in 2022. Uh, typically though, in bull markets, it's not a good indicator. I like to use it as a contrary indicator. It worked well in 2022, but in bull markets, it doesn't work that great because this can go even lower. However, as you can see, once we got to 0 0.8, 0 0.7, it marked a major top in the market. Over here, February top, 0.8, and it was a major top in the market. And then now here, June 16th, potentially major top in the market as it's pushed up off those lows. So maybe we start to trend back up. As the put to call ratio trends up, we should make lower highs and lower lows in the market until the put to call ratio gets extreme to about 1.0 or higher. And then that typically marks a bottom in the market and we have a reversal. So I like to use this as a contrary indicator, but again, in bull markets, it doesn't work that great. I got in a short a starter position at uh, 15,320. It was near the close on Friday. And stop loss is just gonna be above the recent highs. I got in because it's, it's a nice tight stop loss, just about 170 points. Um, first target is the recent swing low at 14,846. So currently at about 2.6 risk. Uh, looks good, looks great. Um, eventual target would be down here about 14,400. So that would be looking like about 880 points. And now we're talking more of about a five to one R. But I'm just focused on here now because I'm, again, I'm not confident that this was the top. Again, I like the divergence that we went higher in SP 500, but couldn't go higher in NASDAQ. However, I think that July has some positive seasonality in the beginning of it. So we could rally for the first two weeks of July, but then basically mid July into uh, mid August, we could sell off and come down below this 14,800 area. That's where we're at right now. Just start a position short here with a tight stop loss. If the price action looks better and I start to see us kind of roll over, I'll probably start to add to the position. Right now, just this is about 25% size of the current size I'd like to put on the trade. So it's a very small size for me. And once I start to see more and I like what I see, then I can add more and keep the stops above the most recent high on NASDAQ. So look out for the next video coming out Wednesday night. I'm gonna be doing a midweek market update and just updating where the market is and where I think it's gonna go. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you appreciated it. I really do appreciate all your support. It lets me know that you enjoy these type of videos. And if you don't, just again, comment down below what you wanna see more of instead. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.